Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Luminar Neo as a plugin for Apple Photos. Apple Photos is a photo management and editing application developed by Apple. It uses the iCloud and it helps you to keep all your photos and videos in a one place. You can access them through iPhone, iPad, Mac, on iCloud.com and even on your PC. This is why this application is quite commonly used even by professional photographers and it will be handy for me to show you how to use it if you own Apple device. So what are we going to do today? Well, first I'm going to show you how to set up the Apple Photos to make sure that you have access to the Luminar Neo as a plugin. Then we're going to take a RAW file, we're going to take it from Apple Photos, bring it into Luminar Neo where we're going to edit it, then bring it back and make it ready for an export. If you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the files so you can do the edit on your own computer. So now the first thing we're going to do is to make sure that Luminar Neo is available as a plugin in your Apple Photos. So how are we going to do that? You want to go ahead and open the system preferences. You can usually find them on your bottom bar or you can also hold together command and space on your keyboard, which will open the spotlight search. Here you can again type system preferences and just click enter. It will open the system preferences. And here I want you to navigate into the extensions. So click on the extensions that will open. And here in this little list, click on photo editing. In the photo editing, go through the list and just make sure that Luminar Neo is here and it has this blue tick in front of it. If it's unticked, you want to make sure that it's ticked and ready on the list. Once this is done, it will be available in your Apple Photos. Once you finish with this, we can close this window and move back to the Apple Photos. Let's make it a little bigger so we can see everything and continue. Here you can already see the sample file we're going to be using. This is the before and after. And as you can see, once again, we're going to be working on the raw file. And on purpose, I choose a picture that I captured with my iPhone. This way it's going to be a little bit more interesting and also a little bit more realistic for the purpose of this training. So we have the image ready here and I will not be covering too much of the file management here in Apple Photos as we focusing on Luminar Neo today. So how can we take the image and move it into Luminar Neo? Well, there are two ways to do this. One, you simply right click on the image and then navigate towards the edit with. Here, there's going to be a list of different photo editing applications. As you can see, I have many. However, when I go through it, Right here is Luminar Neo. I would simply click on it and it would open the application. This list is maybe a little different based on what applications you have, but as long as the Luminar Neo is here, we are good. However, there is another way I like to do this. So let's click away and now double click on the image itself. It will open and now when you move mouse on the top of your screen, you can click on edit here. So click on it, click on edit photo and it will open with the main toolbar on the right side of the screen. Now I don't want to do any adjustments here. I want to just take the image and move it straight into Luminar Neo. And to do that, all we need to do is to click on this little circle with the three dots and here select Luminar Neo. Once you click on it, it will take a few moments and then it's going to open the image in Luminar Neo and in the presets module. Looking at it, you can see we have this bar on the top of the screen, which says Photos and Luminar Neo. So we know that we're using the application as a plugin. 
And also in the top right corner, we have an option to cancel and save changes. But we haven't done anything, so let's do a little edit to it. Of course that you could just choose one of the presets here. However, for us, we're going to be editing the image ourselves. So let's move it into edit module. And we can do that by clicking on edit on the top of our screen and continue from here. As it is a raw file, first we need to develop it. I always like to start by taking care of the noise. So to do that, let's zoom in 100% and let's check how much noise is on the image. There is little bit of noise here as it was a low light situation. However, there are multiple tools we can use in Luminar Neo to remove it. Now, if you do have the noiseless AI extension, it's probably the easiest way to do it. The way to do it, we would go to our main toolbar, click on the noiseless AI row, open it, and then just follow the advice on the screen. Here it says, use the low adjustment for the image. So we just click on the low and wait for it to scan the image and apply the noise reduction. It did really good job removing the noise and keeping some of the details still in the image. However, if you don't own noiseless AI, it's not a problem. We can just reset the tool by using the reset tool in the top right corner of the noiseless row tool. Click on it to close it. And we will use the develop row tool to take care of the noise altogether. So click on the develop row tool, close the light, close the camera profile and head into the noise reduction. At the same time, I like to work with the sharpness. So let's open both of the sections at the same time. Now looking at it again, we know that there is fair bit of noise. So I would go into luminosity and increase it to somewhere around 20. You need to keep an eye on the noise and see what you like and how much noise reduction you want to apply without losing too much of the details. So in our case, I think somewhere around 20 or 25 is actually looking quite good. Once we're happy with it, we can close the noise reduction and move into the sharpness. Now, when it comes to landscape photography, I like to use a simple formula, formula of 100. So we take the number 100 and we minus it with the number we have added into luminosity. So in our case, 100 minus 25 is 75. So that's the value I'll add to the sharpen slider. So let's go and add the 75. It always works quite well. Let's just close the noise reduction and let's continue with the sharpness. Now at this point, we are sharpening everything, the entire image. So even places where there is no details or texture like the sky. So basically we are reintroducing the noise back to the image. So to adjust that and avoid that, we can use masking. So we are still in a sharpness. We go into the masking and usually somewhere between 70 and 80 is the right spot to make sure that we only sharpening the areas with the edge and texture. Once we are happy with it, we can close the sharpness and we move into the light and black and white section. Here, let's just zoom out and continue with the editing. Let's bring the highlights down so we can see the sky. Let's open the shadows a little bit. Let's have a look. Not too much. We don't want to bring too much of the details here, but maybe just somewhere around 10 is looking good. Now looking at the image and the histogram, it may be need a little bit of extra exposure. And after this, we can move to the blacks and whites. With the blacks and whites, you can adjust them following the histogram, or you can also hit J on your keyboard, which will bring the clipping mask. When you see a blue mask on your image, that's too much of the black. And when you see the red overlay, just like here, that's the area that is overexposed and there are too much whites there. So let's adjust the blacks first. Let's bring them down a little bit to make a little bit more contrast. And then with the whites, let's bring them up a little bit as well. Just maybe somewhere around 10. Once we're happy with this, we can close it. And then finally, in our light section, we can add a little bit more contrast to the overall image. Once we're happy with it, we can close the light and we can move to the color section. Open the color section and adjust the white balance. Here we can use one of the presets, for example, the daylight or the cloudy. But I think maybe the daylight is looking the best with a little bit of extra temperature to make it just a little bit warmer. The result is looking quite good. If we want, you can also add a little bit of vibrance just to bring some of the colors back. Once we finish with the color, we are pretty much done with the initial development. We can hit J on our keyboard to switch off the clipping mask and we can close the developer tool. 
From here, I would move into the Enhance AI, where we can use the Sky Enhancer AI slider to bring back even more details in the sky. So just somewhere maybe around 40 is looking good. If we want, we can also check the Accent AI and see if it's gonna help to our image. We wanna be careful here because we don't wanna open too much details here and we don't wanna open too many of the shadows, but I think just somewhere around 10 is looking good. Once we're happy with it, we can also close it. And moving on, I wanna move into the details. In the details, we're gonna bring back even more details than we done with sharpness. So let's add some small details by increasing the small detail slider, just somewhere around 10. And with the medium details, let's go somewhere around five. It's already looking a little bit better, but just like before with the sharpness, we wanna make sure that we adding the details only to the areas that have a details, texture, and edge. To do that, we just need to use details masking. So you click on it to open it. And here inside of the details protection, go somewhere around 75, as well as on the details masking, you wanna go somewhere between 70 and 80. Once you're done with the details, close them. And again, we can continue here. I would then move into the landscape where I would use the golden hour slider to add a little bit more of the golden hour effect. Let's also check the dehaze if it does anything for us, maybe just a little bit, just somewhere around 10. And finally, we can use the foliage enhancer just to bring back some colors on these greens. We can always double check the before and after by using the eye icon at the bottom of our screen. We just click on it, see before and after. And I think so far we're doing pretty well. Once we're happy here, we can close the landscape tool and let's see what else we could use. We can go into the creative section where we can use my favorite mystical tool. Specifically for this type of scene, the mystical tool always works very well. All you need to do here is to just increase the amount to see how you make the colors pop and how you add a little bit of the golden hour glow. You can see what you prefer. Me, I think just somewhere around 20 is looking good. Finally, we can close this and move to the last section of our toolbar, where we're gonna use the super contrast just to play around with the different parts of the image. With the super contrast tool, we have a full tutorial on this tool available on our channel, and I will put the link to the tutorial in a corner of your screen. However, it's very simple. You're just adjusting the contrast separately for highlights, midtones, and shadows. So let's push a little bit of the highlights, which will add some contrast into the sky. And also in the mid-tones, it will just bring some of the tones out and make the result even nicer. Once we finish with the super contrast, we're just gonna go back to our essentials on the top of the main toolbar, where we're gonna add a little bit of vignette. Click on it to open it and use the amount slider to add some vignette to your image. As we want the dark vignette, we're gonna take the amount slider and bring it down and see what we're getting. I think just somewhere around maybe 40 is looking good. And as the glow is coming from this part, what you wanna do, you wanna click on choose subject, which will change your mouse into this little cross. And now where you click, that's where the center of the vignette is going to be. So it works quite well. Now we have the vignette somewhere here and it's looking really good. Let's have a look before and after. It just closed the image and it guides the viewer directly towards the area you want. Now, once we're done here, we can close the vignette and we are pretty much done with the edit. The final thing I would do, I would crop the image a little bit. So for this, we're gonna go into our crop AI tool, click on it to open it, and then we're gonna choose one of the presets here. We can choose, for example, the 16 on nine, which will give us this really strong cinematic look. Let's have a look, maybe just something like this. I quite often like to use the rule of third, where I have one third of a sky and two thirds of the land. In this case, I think it's looking quite good. Once we're happy, just hit enter or click on apply on the tool itself. It takes a moment and then it just crop the image for you. Once you finish, all you need to do now is to click on save changes in the top right corner of your screen. It will take a moment, it will process the image, apply all the edits and bring it back to the Apple Photos. From here, you can continue with the edit if you want to. You can do some auto adjustments, for example, with the light. You can do some additional adjustments with the color. But for us, we've done all of that already, so we're not gonna use any of that. And once we're happy, we just click on done. 
that will bring the picture back to the Apple Photos. And from here, you can share it or you can export it and use it for any of your further projects. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.